Many like to compare Russian and Chinese tanks, where Russian tanks usually get favored over Chinese since the latter are usually claimed to be a copy of Russian tanks. Which isn't entirely true. But a lot of people don't know that Russian and Chinese tanks actually fought against each other where the Chinese vehicles came out victorious. In this video we will take a look at a small conflict with an unusual outcome. Before we go any further, a quick word from my sponsor, War Thunder, which is also a game I quite like playing myself. War Thunder is a military vehicle combat online game. It is free to play on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Not to mention that it is cross-platform between PC and consoles. The game features an incredible arsenal of more than 1500 historically accurate playable tanks, aircraft, helicopters and ships from 1930s to 1990s. Best thing about the game are its realistic physics and one of the most detailed and most immersive vehicle damage models in gaming. If you use my link to register, you will receive a bonus. A premium vehicle, tank, aircraft or ship, as well as 3-day account boost. The game is completely free, so you can start playing immediately. In 2012, a border conflict broke out between South Sudan and Sudan, which is considered a prelude to the South Sudanese civil war. So what do Russian and Chinese tanks have to do with that conflict? Well, Sudan had, around 2006-2007, acquired around 10 Type 85 2M main battle tanks from China. Having previously owned Type 59 Chinese tanks, it seemed fitting to acquire more modern vehicles. On top of that, they operated with old Soviet T-55 tanks as well. South Sudan, on the other hand, has looked elsewhere for their tanks, and no other place than Ukraine. And after the collapse of USSR, Ukraine has kept a batch of Russian-made T-72 AV tanks. For context, during USSR, T-72 and T-80 tanks were made in Russia while T-64 tanks and an exception of T-80 UD were made in Ukraine. So, since Ukraine has no manufacturing capability to really maintain a lot of T-72 tanks, they thought it would be the best to sell them to South Sudan. And on top of that, they offered to send their own people to train the South Sudanese crew. So, on top of acquiring tanks from Ukraine, their crew was also trained up to the Ukrainian standards. When the conflict first broke out in 2012, Sudan first deployed their older Type 59 and T-55 tanks, but those were quickly dealt with by the South Sudanese T-72 AV tanks. It should also be noted that South Sudan also acquired some ATGMs from China, that supported their T-72 tanks in those battles. This also meant that China was in it for the money, they didn't support either of the two sides. After suffering heavy losses, Sudan decided to deploy their somewhat newly acquired Type 85 2M tanks to face the South Sudanese T-72 AV tanks. A platoon of Chinese-made Type 85 2M tanks, operated by Sudanese crews, came into contact with a platoon of Russian-made T-72 AV tanks operated by South Sudanese. And this time, the results were catastrophic for the T-72s. Chinese Type 85 2M tanks took out four T-72 AV tanks, out of which two were completely destroyed. Sudanese, on the other hand, suffered no losses on their Type 85 tanks and came out victorious in that battle. So how did that happen? How did Chinese tanks take out Russian T-72s? It's simple, Type 85 2M is a superior tank. Type 85 2M can be called the prototype of Type 96 tank, but it's basically the same tank. The main difference between Type 85 2M or Type 96 and T-72 AV is the fire control system. Type 85 has IS VCS 212 fire control system that is also used on Type 96 tank. This fire control system, unlike the one of T-72 AV, gives the tank ability to automatically lead the moving targets where the gunner on T-72 AV has to guess where to shoot when engaging a target that's on the move. Another main difference between the two fire control systems is the fact that Chinese one has third generation image intensifier for night vision, while the one of T-72 has first generation, and as such requires an infrared searchlight which gives away the tank's location. 
The difference in fire control systems is very important, especially in modern times where the vehicles are constantly on the move. And being able to hit moving targets accurately is very important. From the images of the destroyed T-72 tanks, we could see that they were on the open, which would either suggest that they were moving during combat or that they were ambushed. We should also consider the projectiles they could have been firing at each other. It is quite possible that since the tanks are basically from the late 70s, that the kinetic energy projectiles that they received were old and unable to penetrate Type 85 tanks, something like 3BM-17 or 3BM-22. But those would have no problem penetrating the old Type 59 and T-55 tanks that they were previously engaging. The Chinese vehicles might have been supplied with a more modern 125-1 EPF-SDS since it is a standard projectile for their export vehicles, but I could not find any information on when exactly they started exporting the set projectile. Nevertheless, what they had was obviously enough to go through the T-72 tanks, with devastating effects. This is very similar scenario to what happened in the Gulf War. When they were facing Iranian T-55 tanks, Iraqi T-72s performed very well. But once a superior tank entered the battlefield, the M1A1 Abrams, they were completely decimated. So, Type 96 equal to Abrams? All jokes aside, the outcome of the conflict was not surprising, since the Type 85 2M tanks were much more modern than the T-72AV tanks. T-72AV is literally a T-72A tank with added Contact 1 explosive reactive armor on top. And the tank entered service in USSR back in 1979. Type 85 2M is from the 90s, more than a decade after the T-72A was developed. Today Russians completely moved away from T-72A tanks and mostly operate T-72B3 tanks. Chinese have upgraded their Type 96 tanks to Type 96B standard. So this is no representation of the most modern Chinese and Russian tanks. But it is an interesting battle nevertheless. It should also be noted that at least one Sudanese Type 85 2M was lost in 2016, but according to available information, all other Type 85s are still operable. Don't forget to check out War Thunder, where you can take control of many land, air or naval vehicles. Use the link from the description to get a premium vehicle and a 3-day account boost when you register. Remember, the game is completely free for PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Just download and play. At the end, both Chinese and Russian tanks are good in their own way. Chinese did borrow a lot of solutions from the Soviet design, but the overall idea is the only thing that they copied. Fundamentally, all of those vehicles are completely different. That would be all. If you like my content, you can consider supporting me on Patreon, and if you can't, leave a like on the video or subscribe to the channel if you are new. That also helps a lot. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.